receive more insights on the same we have with us dr rani bhagat a very warm welcome ma'am dr rani bhagat is an assistant professor in department of botany at baburaoji gorlap college pune she has completed her mphil from alagappa university tamil nadu and phd from agarkar research institute pune she has also authored two different two reference books that is flora of baramati and floristic diversity of murshi she is also a recognized guide for botany and environmental science in pune university with currently three students under her guidance ma'am is also a fellow of indian association for angiosperm taxonomy and has authored and presented more than 30 research papers nationally and internationally she is an awardee for multiple recognitions the most prestigious being in iaat an international conference for oral presentation dr bhagat is an extensive floristics explorer and is involved in related activities nationally and internationally since the last 20 years she has also discovered new species and made additions to flora of maharashtra she is a recipient of multiple fellowships for research work on wide variety of topics along with all the recognitions and excellent contributions to science dr bhagat has also published an article in braille ma'am we are really honored to have you here and without further ado we are eager to learn while you share your knowledge and insights with us over to you ma'am thank you so much for a nice introduction and also uh, thanks to shilpa ma'am for uh, invitation to me we'll start with the topic as just now ma'am told that i'm going to talk on the topic biodiversity of grasses uh, which is belonging to the family poesi and its significance uh, before i have to start with this lecture uh, in the initial um, slide itself i want to tell you that grasses these are the green gold on the earth surface though we value the gold but it is a very very important gold on the earth so it's a green gold and the grasses are a great group of plants on this planets so let's go with this next slide please so in my today's topic uh, i'm going to sensitize the characteristics of the grasses its identification then ecology utilization of grasses and the management of grasslands why it is essential next please so um, as far as the family poes or the uh, this family gramini is concern it is the fourth largest flowering plant family in the world and there are about 800 genera and 11800 species in the world so about half that is 400 genera these are the monotypic that is a single genus and single species or they may be dietypic that is single genus with two species so there are about 127 species of grasses which are endemic to the state so they are uh, very restricted in distribution near about 413 species they are belonging to the 123 genera and 41 varieties are reported for the state so far and nearly uh, the 20% of the land surface of the asia and more than 10% of the india are under the grasslands including both the lowland and the mountain grasslands so globally about uh, 17 grassland ecoregions these are detected as critically endangered by conservation science program of world wildlife fund next please which lie in indo malayan regions so uh, we'll see about what are the grasses then what are the grassland which are the different types of grasslands in the world what are the different types of grasslands in uh, india Uh, which are the various compositions of grasslands uh, which are found in the pune districts and then we'll see the uh, morphology of grasses then we'll learn about the uh, uh, economic importance or the significance of the grasses and then uh, we'll see about what uh, what are what is the need of a grassland management and uh, what kind of uh, things are happening in the nature and in our surrounding areas so grass is nothing but a specially a member of a family poesi generally what we say that whatever the uh, species which grow in the agricultural land and which we uproot all these are not belonging to the grass category 
so uh, the terminology which is used as a tan so tan is nothing but a weed but grass is different than that this is one of the member from that uh, weed but these are different with a distinct nodes and internodes uh, many a times the members of other families like uh, cyperaceae which is generally known as sages or uh, members from the family junkaceae uh, known as a, a rushes so uh, people say that all these are grasses but it is not like that so grasses are different than the sages and rushes and we will understand uh, what are the basic difference between these sages and the poaceae too so basically the grasslands these are commonly predominated by the herbs and the other grass or grass like plants which are including undergrowth trees so this is as far as the indian climatic condition is concerned we see the uh, grasslands in between the uh, tree habitats or we we may see the grasslands in the uh, forest land too but as far as the other countries or the world grassland is concerned we we can't see the trees in that so uh, these may be a uh, true grassland but as far as the indian uh, country uh, india is concerned we don't have a true grasslands so we uh, the grasslands are interspersed with the tree habitats so grassland is an area where the annual rainfall is insufficient to support the uh, shrubs or the trees and that's why we see the luxuriant growth of a uh, uh, this grass is during the rainy season uh, and uh, in india trees and grasslands are mixed but it is still high enough to that desert uh, uh, which are not form uh, there next please so up to 70% of the world's agricultural land uh, which is uh, given to the grasses and more than 50% of the world's calories these are come from the grasses and it highlights the significance uh, one more click so the key characteristics of the grassland ecosystems are the uh, limited annual rainfall or the dry climate uh, throughout the year or there is a lack of nutrients in the soil and that's why it does not support the tree flora or uh, uh, these grasslands are prone to drought and uncertain precipitation it is there and so there is not much biomass to support the other kinds of a uh, flora and there is a uh, sometimes frequent fire uh, due to the semi arid climates and the flash lightning and this is one of the characteristics of the grassland and the poor vegetation growth which is dominated by the grasses so this is the general uh, morphology of a spikelet next please so as far as the morphological thing is concerned to understand a one member of a grass is that as far as leaves is concerned there is a parallel venation there is a sheathing leaf bases uh, where the uh, the basal part of the leaves it encircles the stem so that is known as a sheathing leaf base then leaves are ligulate that we'll understand in the next slide cylindrical comb and fibrous root system and there is a distinct nodes and internodes next please so um, just now i told you that um, many times the people get confused with the members of cyperaceae with the poaceae and here we understand the basic difference between the cyperaceae and poaceae i will highlight very few things as far as the cyperaceae is concerned these are herbs only but poaceae if one can consider a poaceae members may be herbs or trees so bamboo is the species uh, which uh, is a tree so it belongs to the poaceae Uh, as far as the stem character is concerned in case of cyperaceae stem it is triangular rarely cylindrical but in case of poaceae it is always cylindrical and it's hollow uh, one more important uh, thing is that uh, the fruit type it is of a nut or akin in the cyperaceae and in case of poaceae it is a caryopsis and about the leaf character the leaves are three ranked in cyperaceae while in case of poaceae it is two ranked next please so here you can understand uh, the difference between the poaceae and the cyperaceae where in case of a poaceae there is a distinct nodes and internodes leaves are with a sheathing leaf base but you can see here in case of um, uh, this uh, cyperaceae member uh, the leaves these are substanding the flowers flowers at the top and these are three rank but here in case of poaceae these are alternate one next please uh in case of leaves 
the there is a sheathing lip base here you can observe the sheathing lip base with a distinct hairs and uh, there is a ligule lip ligule you will see the picture in the next slide there is a hairy rim at the nodal region of the uh, stem as well as uh, you may see the hairy rim uh, at the ligule uh, portion of the lip uh, these are membranous uh, and there is a auricle structure you will see the encircled or half circle structure lip lamina it is uh, uh, originate from the basal uh, petiole portion and it get expanded and showing a parallel venation a single midrib it is there and all the veins are parallelly arranged and the lip lamina generally it is narrow lip tip it is acute it is very sharp some very rarely it is blunt uh, headed the lip bases these are corded and the uh, it is a petiolate one and the sometimes cuneate one lip shape these are lanceolate linear or oblong next is so here in this picture you can see that this is the lip lamina and at the base base of lip lamina there is a ring and that ring is known as a lip ligule so here i want to tell you that the lip ligule plays very significant role in the identification of grasses and even at the lamina side at the margin of lip lamina you are observing the hairy outgrowth so uh, very uh, special grasses they show such a hairy growth on the margins of lip lamina and the this ligule it may be hairy or it may be without hairy structure or it may be a papery next please in this slide you can see that the lip ligule it is papery so it is uh, it is showing a variety or variation with respect to the uh, lip ligule and helps in identification next please now about the inflorescence that is a flower structure so there are so many flower they are grouped together and uh, they are arranged in a very typical fashion so they may be either a paniculate type as in case of a sorghum jowar or it may be of a raceme type as in case of a uh, this um, uh, wheat actually it is a spike but it is of, uh, from the racemous category it may be sometimes branched raceme in case of a dicanthium or uh, it may be digitate one there is one of the member from oac that is digitaria where you can see the so many racemes but these are in form of digitate structure and the uh, uh, it is having a special uh, structure sometimes seen that is sheath or bracts sometimes uh, inflorescence may be solitary that is single one uh, sometimes uh, the uh, so many floret they are combined together structure is known as a spikelets and they spikelet they are form the bunches on the inflorescence axis so we'll see the structure of a spikelet next please so this is a basic uh, grass spikelet morphology uh, how the flowers are arranged and how the stamens are there uh, in the floret and uh, in the spikelet uh, what kinds of florets are there next please so here uh, you will see that uh, these inflorescence they are composed of a spikelets which is the unit of a inflorescence and in the inflorescence or that flower structure small small minute florets are there these are actually flowers but in case of family poaceae or cyperaceae it is term as a florets so these florets they are grouped together it is referred as a many floret or many flowered spikelet or sometimes there may be flowers which are one to two flowered so there is a presence of only two florets so basically in the single floret next slide please in this single uh, uh, next please in the single floret what structures are present these are not like a normal flower uh, means uh, calyx corolla androecium gynoecium uh, such a type of structure is not there instead of that some highly modified structure highly advanced structure because poaceae is the most advanced family in the flowering plants and still evolution is going on in this family and so a uh, very special kind of structure which may uh, which you uh, you may see and uh, that is with the lower gloom uh, which is a papery structure inside to that there is one more papery structure known as a upper gloom inside to that you will see there is presence of again small small minute papery structures known as a lemma and pelia and then uh, the uh, fleshy structure at the base of ovary which actually plays a significant role in the dispersal of seed is lodicules and then ori which uh, matures and it produces the grain or fruit of the family poaceae uh, which is called as a caryopsis type of fruit 
and then uh, in a single floret there is presence of three stamens which is a male reproductive structure of the flower through which the reproduction takes place and the seeds or the fruits are developed and the stigma it is feathery next please uh, about the habits of uh, family uh, poesy members or the grasses these may be either arboreal or these may be terrestrial or these may found on the walls or they may be aquatic one or the grasses which are found on the sea shore line these are different so here in this picture you are observing the a variety of habits uh, like a arboreal grasses the grasses which are grows on the tree trunks or on the surface of the walls and uh, these are actually a poikilohedrous grasses uh, because uh, during the rainy season they can uh, take the water and uh, uh, they becomes green in color and uh, another kind of grass that is hygrorhiza which grows in the water and the, on the walls tripogon filiformis or tripogon lisboi these are the grasses which helps in uh, uh, binding the uh, soil and the, uh, there are different kinds of grasses which uh, grows on the seashore line and uh, actually male and female inflorescences in these grasses are different and they rolls on the soil along the seashore line and this special grass uh, which is having a very spiny structure bunchy structure and uh, this is nothing but the spinifex litorius next please uh, some of the grasses they are very specific to the marshy areas and uh, they support that uh, soil binding characters along the uh, uh, river side and uh, besides that so many insects birds and reptiles they uh, come and uh, they feed on that uh, so this is the one of the uh, very special kind of a uh, marshy place uh, grass that is the stacarum uh, spontaneum uh, which is actually wild uh, sugarcane uh, plant another like is isacne then wild sorghum species uh, then paspalum species and uh, in the last picture you are observing the different kinds of a uh, grasses along the river side next please uh, so we here in uh, in uh, upcoming slides we will see the morphology of grasses here you are observing the prostrate or horizontally growing grass uh, then erect grasses these are they are forming a bunches and uh, they uh, they binds the soil and they prevent the soil erosion so this is a chrysoprogon grass next please this is a tragus grass next please so these grasses are growing on a variety of soil some may grow on the salty soil some may grow on the alluvial soil same some may grow on the uh, rock crevices so uh, accordingly they have a small habits or the larger habit like that so this is a oropetium grass which grows in the rock crevices next please so you see here you can observe that the what kind of root system it has it, it is having a very profuse adventitious root system a fibrous root system it is there and because of that it holds the soil uh, uh, beside that uh, the seepage and the precipitation process it is very good through these uh, grasses and for a longer period of time it can uh, maintain the in the soil next please here you can observe the another kind of a grasses generally the cultivated cereal crops uh, here i want to tell you one important thing is that all over the world uh, the most important grasses these are the uh, belonging to the cereals these are the staple foods of the human beings or mankind like sorghum or jowar or the sugarcane or uh, wheat bajra rice all they belonging to the grasses and they have in a very typical kind of root system so that is from the lower node which uh, gives a extra support to the plant body such a kinds of roots are called as stilt roots observed in case of maize and jowar next please uh, here you can see that at the nodal region you are observing the small hairy structures or sometimes bud or sometimes sheathing leaf bases come out of this uh, uh, this nodal portion so uh, this is the variety of grass morphology which plays significant role in the identification next please uh, just now i told you that the grasses they may be either herbs or they may be trees so here you, here you are observing a tall grasses that is bamboos next now coming to the world grasslands uh, there are actually a two main kinds of grasslands at world level 
लाइक ए ट्रॉपिकल ग्रासलैंड एंड द टेम्परेट ग्रासलैंड उष्ण कटिबंधीय मन तो समीतोष्ण कि शीतोष्ण कटिबंधीय ग्रासलैंड सो दोज विच आर ग्रोज इन द वेरी कोल्ड क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन सो उष्ण थंड ट्रॉपिकल एंड टेम्परेट ग्रासलैंड आर दियर टेम्परेट ग्रासलैंड एक्चुअली इन्क्लूड द यूरिशियन स्टेप एंड द नॉर्थ अमेरिकन प्रेरीज दे इन्क्लूड दे आर फ्रॉम दी टेम्परेट ग्रासलैंड देन अर्जेंटिना पंपास दीज आर द नेम्स ऑफ ए ग्रासलैंड इन ए डिफरंट कंट्रीज एंड द ट्रॉपिकल ग्रासलैंड विच इन्क्लूड द हॉट सवानाज एंड द सब सहारन अफ्रिका एंड द नॉर्दन ऑस्ट्रेलिया मीन्स द ग्रासलैंड दे हैव मेनी नेम्स लाइक प्रेरीज इन द नॉर्थ अमेरिका एशियन स्टेप्स इन देन सवानाज एंड वेल्ड्स इन अफ्रिका ऑस्ट्रेलियन रेंज लैंड पंपास लाइनॉस एंड द सीरोड्स दीज आर द variety of names for the grasslands all over the world in some, uh, south america it is called as a pampas and in the central uh, eurasian grasslands they are referred as a steppes while african grasslands they are calling it as a savannas uh, so the largest uh, temperate grasslands of the world is the eurasian steppes which is uh, extending from actually hungary to the china and the wild kind of a grasslands uh, they are found in africa which is uh, actually occurring in the most southern uh, portion of the continent and so here the temperate grasslands generally uh, prairies and the uh, steppe is they are the actually true grasslands now why these are called as a true grassland because um, uh, there is a vast usually uh, throughout uh, the complete level of a grasses uh, means there is a treeless tract trees are not found in the grasslands so in the prairies and in the steppes you cannot see the trees so there is a vast level of a grasses only and these are true grassland but here in india we have a we don't have a true grasslands and uh, such a kinds of grasslands are also found in the uh, uh, southwestern uh, uh, europe and asia also and in india the grasslands have both characteristics that is uh, there is a span across the north uh, india and central india and uh, some regions of gujarat and some regions of the uh, sahyadris or the ghats so here in this picture you are observing the distribution of a grasslands like prairies pampas steppe veld and the savanna next please now uh, here we are more con concentrating on the grasslands in india so as i have told you that uh, the grasslands in india are usually found around the uh, river plains or the indo gangetic plains and the brahmaputra plains in the north and the narmada plain in the uh, gujarat and the grassland ecosystem um, in india it is from the himalayan pastures pastures manje kuran we have a terai grasslands of the foothills Uh, we have a semi arid grasslands of western and central india uh, then scrublands of the deccan plateau and the uh, shola kind of forest in the western ghats and these kinds of grasslands are also found in nilgiris and annamalai ranges so depending upon the quantity of rain that is precipitation through the rain uh, there may be either a tall grassland there may be medium size grasslands or there may be a short grasses so uh, in india we have a uh, actually a four to five kinds of grasslands first one is a coastal grassland which includes the sea beaches that is mainland and the inland type of grasslands um, then the salt marshes then the mangrove grasslands are there we have a uh, river and alluvial grasslands we have a mountain grasslands at the himalayan ranges uh, which includes the himalayan subtropical grasslands then himalayan temperate grasslands alpine meadows trans himalayan steppe uh, grasslands of northeast hills grasslands of central highlands western ghats that is sahyadris and then we have a uh, plateaus of a northern western ghats we have a shola grasslands we have a southwestern uh, ghat grasslands we have eastern ghats grasslands we have mountain bamboo tracts of grasslands so these are the variety of grasslands found in india next please so this is the actual picture of types of grassland which was uh, measured in 1954 to 62 showing uh, 
actually where the types of particular types of grasslands are situated so temperate alpine cover which is at the himalayan ranges then the there is a thimeda arundinella type of grassland below that then there is a dicanthium cenchreus lassurus cover type of grasslands then we have a phragmatis saccharum imperata type of grasslands we have a phragmatis saccharum imperata dicanthium and cenchreus type of grasslands and in the central part of india we have a sahima dicanthium cover type of grasslands next please so here you can see the pictures of these grasslands how it looks and uh, how these are composed of variety of uh, grasses so this is a coastal grassland uh, salt marsh uh, grassland it is at the run of kash in gujarat next please this is a river and alluvial grassland next please this is a mountain grassland alpine meadows so uh, this is one kind of a true grassland uh, which does not have a tree flora in them and it forms a uh, cover on the earth surface or on the ground next please this is a trans himalayan grassland again it is without the tree flora next please this is a tibetan steppe at uh, mansarovar next please this is a sub uh, sub himalayan tall grasslands of uh, terai region so these terai grasslands uh, these are found at the foothills of the himalayas and they consist of a tall elephant uh, grass along with the sal forests and the largest herbivore of this terai is the elephant so this this is a very important herbivore which is depend on the grasses and it requires an uh, enormous amount of a tall grass to feed on so it is found along the ganga and the brahmaputra rivers Uh, terai grasslands they form the very important habitat for the swamp deer uh, even for the wild buffaloes and the rhinoceros next please this is a very important grassland which is found in the nilgiri hills or in the south western uh, ghats or sahyadris which is referred as a shola grassland uh, this shola grassland they are found in the high rainfall areas and that's why at the top of the mountain or the uh, hill we'll see only grasses there is no any tree flora due to the heavy rainfall it it does not support the growth of a trees so uh, this shola grasslands found in high rainfall areas in southern india and they are located on hill slopes with a patches of forest that occur along the nala courses and the, this nilgiri thar this is the animal this nilgiri thar is found only in this grassland and uh, nowadays it is highly endangered so we have to conserve these uh, grasslands for these animals too next please this is again another kind of a uh, grassland which is a uh, semi arid grassland then this is a desert savanna type of grassland uh, so these uh, grasses they actually provide a forage for the herbivores and uh, uh, because of that they have developed uh, the uh, conjunction with the different types of a grasses uh these grazing animals uh in turn they contribute to the grasslands by providing a nutrients so uh, like a symbiotic type of association the uh, these animals they depend on the grasses for food and uh, later on uh, whatever the excreta and all these things they come on the earth surface at the same time microorganisms and the biomass which is formed from the grasses it support the next kind of a uh, succession in the ecosystem so uh, the these grasslands are there now as far as the pune district is concerned uh, when i have studied the sahyadri region especially the mulshi region which is a part of northern western ghat um, i have reported some special uh, grasslands um, like a simbabogon sub type of grassland thimida isolima sub type of grassland then sidenthestria sub type of grassland heteropogon sub type of grassland so these are the different names of a grasses and based on the abundance based on the dominance based on the frequency based on the density of these grasses uh, uh, these are some of the sub types uh, which i have uh, made and uh, you will see the pictures of all these grassland next please so this is a simbopogon sub type of grassland Uh, where there is a dominance of simbopogon grass from which the essential oil is extracted and which cover the this, this grass it cover the whole surface so there is a complete composition of a simbopogon type of grasses 
Next, please. This is a Thimida isolima type of grassland. So, uh, when there is a maximum precipitation in the soil and uh, there is a um, good amount of nutrients in the soil, which is supporting a next level of a uh, grasses. Uh, so, these include the Thimida. These are a tall grasses. Isolima, it is also a tall grass. And uh, this is because of the moisture content at a low lying areas. So, at a Konduri areas, when we uh, go to the Lavasa, on that way, uh, this uh, typical type of grasslands are found. Next, please. This is a heteropogon sedanthistria type of grassland. Uh, again, uh, near to the Lavasa area, you will see the small uh, hill slopes or the small mountains. These are covered with a uh, only one kind of a grasses and this is a heteropogon type of a grass and uh, because of this a large amount of biomass is uh, formed which support the insects birds and reptiles and so many things uh, get supported by such a kinds of grassland next please the another kind of grassland again it is a heteropogon subtype there is only heteropogon there is no intermixed sedanthesphere species next please This is a dicanthium heteropogon sahima type of grassland where there is a composition of a three kinds of species from the grasses and that is why it is named as like this. Next please. This is a sahima chrysopogon type of grassland at Lamkani, Dure. And I will tell you the story of this grassland afterwards. Next please. Now, many times what happens uh, that uh, we go on the plateau regions. We go on these areas and during summer season, we see that the complete area is barren. But actually, students, it is not like that. It actually, it's a richest biodiversity area. World's richest biodiversity uh, vegetation, one can say it is found on the plateaus. There may be a variety of species, not only the grasses, but also the uh, so many endemic, Jalapan Pradesh Nishtamanto, endemic species or so many rare species, RET species, rare endangered and threatened category species, they are found on the plateaus. But they are ephemeral one. They grow after a first rain shower. And uh, once they complete their life cycle, uh, they, uh, uh, they have an underground modified structure. And that's why we cannot see the upper uh, leaves or the flower structure. And we say that this is a barren thing. Nothing is there. But when we go there in the rainy season, it is completely flourished with a, so many grass species supporting the microflora, which occurs or comes in during that season only. And uh, 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 that is why such a kind of a uh, grass flora, it is a uh, very important for maintaining the ecosystem. So this is a dimeria type of grassland, which is an idiosyncratic grasses of a rock outcrops of a higher altitude. So when we'll go at the Salter or Barpe areas in uh, Murshi, you will see such a kinds of a uh, plateaus, which is covered with a variety of plants, especially which are dominated by the uh, grasses uh, belonging to the dimeria category. Next, please. Not only this, the wall floras on the forts, uh, there are variety of grasses. And the most important endemic grass, which occurs on the surface of the wall, it is a Arthraxon jubatus. So, uh, uh, it is present on the walls. So, the main crest of the northern western ghats or the Sahyadris, they support a variety of grasses. And they are mostly, they are endemic one. Like uh, Arthraxon jubatus, Tripogon, then uh, Pseudodicanthium, Ischimum. So, these are the names of the grasses, which are generally found on the walls. And uh, they play a very uh, significant role in binding the uh, soil. And these are poikilohydrous type of a grasses. Um, they, uh, they dry up during the rains, uh, uh, during the summer season. And regain, they become green uh, during the rainy season. Next, please. So, uh, these are the variety of grasses which are endemic to the western ghat. That is uh, Lopopogon tridentus. Uh, it is found on the rocky soil surface. Then Apludomitica, it is the most palatable grass. Uh, it is most liked by the uh, animals. It is a very good fodder grass. In Marathi, it is called as a Moti Gavat. Next, please. And the most important grass is a Triplopogon ramosesimum. It is uh, occurring at a high altitudes as well as on the low lines also. And uh, uh, it is very important endemic grass from the Sahyadris. 
next please again these are the variety of grasses you just observe the uh, morphology that is uh, uh, diversity is in the inflorescence structure it plays very significant role in the identification and they grow in a variety of soils like rocky soil uh, the soil which is less in nutrients or some in the marshy places some at a high rainfall regions and so on next please again see the diversity um, like a aragrosti species aragrostella species melanosincra species and so on next please then thilipogon grass then andropogon uh, grass uh, penicillium pedicillatum these are most palatable grasses uh, to the animals next please Uh, I have told you that uh, not only the small herbaceous grasses are there, but there are tall tree-like structures are also seen in the Poaceae family, and it is nothing but the bamboo. So bamboos are the arborescent grasses, and they belonging to the family again Poaceae, which is a family Bambusoidae. And actually, they are differentiated from the other members of Poaceae, uh, having a tree-like habit, and uh, they are having a hollow culms. Culms means the stem structure, and uh, rhizome. and the branch system uh, there is a no sheathing lip like structure like other uh, grasses next please now these bamboo species um, they are a highly renewable resource for the human beings uh, because every bamboo come it reaches a full physical dimension uh, in a 180 to 210 days and we can explore it we can use that resource the peak strength and maturity it is in 3 to 4 years so one can harvest and use for the Uh, various uh, preparation of various products and unlike other uh, timber species it can be harvested every year so that is one of the advantage of a bamboo grass and uh, 100 and plus species of the bamboos are there all over the world and 100 million tons of the growing stock may be available through the bamboos it is one of the major industrial uh, use uh, and only pulp and paper industry uh, this source is uh, utilized and mostly it is cultivated in the assam part of india next please so here you can see the various products of bamboo uh, grass and uh, it is an uh, applications transforming an age old material for us uh, it can be used for the building on traditional usage and uh, based on the knowledge also for forging linkages between the organized and unorganized sectors adding the values and creating a jobs to the young youth and also to create a income to get the income and all parts of the bamboo plants are used for several other purposes and uh, so here you, you can see the various things you know that the uh, uh hari prasad chaurasia and navin kumar uh, that flute so these uh, comes through these bamboos only next please now the ecological value the grasses they belonging to the two types of um, uh, plants actually these are c3 plants and the c4 plants it is very difficult to actually understand those are known non botanists um, but in short i will tell you that the c3 photosynthesis they produces a three carbon compound via kelvin cycle and c4 plants like maize sugarcane pearl millets and the sorghum um they produces by another pathway uh, the car carbon compound is produced through another pathway and they have a kranz type of anatomy so here in this picture you are observing at the center there is a ring of a particular cells uh, this is nothing but a wreath or a ring of a particular cells and that is known as a kranz anatomy so c3 photosynthesis that is the process through which the food material is synthesized in the plant material which is known as a photosynthesis so when the photosynthesis is through the c3 pathway Uh, this a uh, three compound uh, three carbon compound via kelvin cycle get produced and it is uh, um, uh, seen in the uh, plants like the uh, sugarcane while c4 photosynthesis it marks an intermediate four carbon compound that splits into three carbon compound through kelvin cycle um so these uh, two kinds of grasses i want to uh, say that these two kinds of grass plants are seen c3 and c4 plants i will not go in detail because it will take uh, much more time then it shows a carbon sequestration so soil carbon sequestration or the uh, is a process in which the carbon dioxide it is removed from the atmosphere and it is stored in the soil carbon pool 
so this process is primarily uh, mediated by the plants through the photosynthesis so this kind uh, this mechanism it is very good uh, in the grasses uh, then it has a seepage of water so in a very uh, slow uh, uh, motion or one can say that uh, when water flows from one place to the another via smaller holes or the porous material this process is very good in case of a grasses as the grasses are having a very good root system fibrous root system advantageous root system and there is a bunches of the grasses so it prevent the very fast flow of the water so there is a reduction in the runoff of water during the rainy season so uh, um, it uh, prevents the soil erosion in that way and the moisture retention capacity in fibrous root it is very high and that is why uh, it is good for the uh, uh, health of the soil um, to keep the soil live to keep the soil active because there are so soil is not a dead thing there are lot of things in the soil and so this soil get enriched by the moisture present in the soil and this proper very important function is carried out by our grasses so uh, grasses plays very significant role in the ecosystem to maintain the good health uh, uh, as far as the ecology is concerned it provides a food not only to the mankind but uh, to the variety of uh, organisms on the earth surface it is a very good fodder value it is also used for the fuel purpose for clothing purpose and thatching purpose etc uh, it plays significant role in the primary colonization and succession so generally when we see the uh, vegetation in the primary stage we see the small uh, uh, plant group uh, like uh, there may be algae or there may be bryophytes and later on uh, once the biomass get formed then the nature like plants get formed like uh, Uh, pteridophytes and then gymnosperms and the climax or the of the any kind of vegetation is the uh, forest or the tree flora so the basic thing it starts from the grasses because they form the biomass and once there is a formation of biomass nutrient level get enhanced it gets increased and then it support the further kind of a flora so grasses plays very 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 significant role in the primary colonization and successional stages to produce the climax forest uh, type of uh, thing uh, one more a very important thing is that it is a habitat for other wildlife uh, while taking one example of the uh, animal uh, uh, man animal conflict uh, in the nature one can understand the significance of the grasses because if there will be no herbivores in the grass uh, in the forest the wildlife will not sustain and nowadays the forest get cut the grasslands are not maintained properly or on the grassland areas the tree flora uh, trees are uh, uh, grown so uh, in this way uh, there is a uh, reduction or there is a destruction in the grasslands and uh, because of that the herbivores are not available to the carnivorous animal and uh, this is the biggest problem in the ecosystem and that's why we see uh, bipta like animals in uh, the agricultural fields next please so the grasses these are very uh, economically important species most of the grasses like triticum estium so near about 10 to 12 staple food of the mankind it comes out of these grasses like wheat triticum estium corn barley rice rye oat sorghum pearl millets finger millets um, and the variety of um, these wheat species so wheat it is actually come from the grasses like triticales uh, uh, then uh, that is a, a actual species it is a triticum estimum which we eat or it is a triticum durum or triticum uh, tergedum or monococcum like that or polonicum but the earlier grasses uh these are crossed and from that by breeding process these our uh, most uh, important grasses are developed like cereals and millets they come out of the breeding programs so these are the wild relatives of our uh, uh, cereals next please so these are the variety of cultivated uh, grasses you know all these things next please so here you can see the panoramic view of the Uh, rice cultivation at mawal region how it looks so maximum area uh, agriculture area it is under the cultivation of variety of grasses next 
then uh, there are uh, fodder grasses like uh, napier grass penicetum purpureum or the guinea grass panicum ter uh, panicum maximum but beside that uh, uh, there are more than 300 species of grasses are there and as far as mulshi region is concerned i have reported 184 species of grasses and all these are very good fodder for the uh, animals then uh, so many essential oils are extracted from the grasses which is either used in a perfumery or in the cosmetic industries like lemon grass then uh, palmarosa then whatever that is wala grass which is used for uh, purifying the water bodies uh, then um, grasses these are a good habitat for our wildlife it is a livelihood options for us these are very good soil binders next please Uh, there are variety of ornamental grasses are there uh, there is one um, person who said one statement like uh, there is nothing more pleasant uh, to the eye than the green grass so here you can understand how it uh, looks beautiful and it becomes so pleasant there are variety of uh, uh, grasslands are cultivated for landscaping purposes like uh, rinculitrum grass then zoysia grass then cynodon there are variety of grasses are used for landscaping purposes uh, then uh, there is also uh, medicinal properties to the grasses like there is a cynodon dactylon grass which is having a cooling properties and it is used for variety of problems uh, the broom the uh, jhadu apan manto that is also prepared from one of the grass species that is thysolina so the first picture it is of thysolina the background picture it is of imperata cylindrica the corner picture it is of zoysia the lower picture it is of a phragmites grass and the corner picture it is of a uh, another species that is eulaliopsis bineta which is a uh, grass from which the rope or rope is prepared so it is uh, having a highest percentage of a fiber in them and it also plays uh, the uh, important role in a carbon sequestration in that sipur grasses are very important next please Uh, then uh, just now i have told you that grasses are very good for the uh, food purpose a uh, 12 different staple food come from this uh, grasses and fodder you know that the uh, uh, india ranks second in the milk production after the denmark and uh, uh, this animal I mean, animal husbandry all these things they depend on the monocot members and especially the grasses so most of the grasses they are cultivated फॉर दी फॉर्डर पर्पज है ज्यादा हत्ती गवत मन तो गिनिया गवत मैं मटले हो सो दीज आर द फॉर्डर ग्रासेस एंड द हाइएस्ट मिल्क प्रोडक्शन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड हियर द इंडिया इज रैंकिंग सेकेंड इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द रिचेस्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ द ग्रासेस एंड हियर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ द ग्रासेस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टंट बिकॉज एट एवरी मॉर्निंग वी वॉन्ट टू ड्रिंक द मिल्क सो फ्रॉम वेर एक्सैक्टली मिल्क कम तो वी से दैट दीज कम फ्रॉम द एनिमल्स बफेलो ग्यूज एंड काउ ग्यूज द मिल्क but it is not like that our grasses playing very significant role they are growing there the animals feed on that and the fodder value highest fodder value it is through the grasses grasses and cover it is very important it prevent the soil erosion and uh, uh, they uh, they increase the highest nutrients in the soil they enrich the soil they makes uh, they keep the soil live otherwise the soil become dead and nothing will grow on over there so these are the small things uh, many times it get uh, it is not notice over there but they are continuously working over there and the soil microflora it is playing significant role in the degradation of these grasses so they are symbiotically growing over there uh, there is one statement uh, by the taxonomist or the scientist they said that if one can uproot or one can destroy one of the species from the nature at that time 25 dependent uh, organism get lost so uh, this grass cover it plays a very important role in conservation of this organism so try to conserve all the grasses uh, there is one species of the grass which is recently discovered by the uh, one of the group from kolhapur that is uh, hubarde heptanuron so for the conservation of that single species uh, the ministry has given a uh, like uh, 50 to 60 lakh rupees so if here you can understand what is the value of a single Uh, grass species there is a gene diversity and every gene like human being we have a specific gene composition we have a genetic diversity 
uh, within us the similar kind of genes are there in the plants so every gene present in the plant species is very important and so here all the grass species they plays very significant role for us but we don't know so so try to respect our grasses and they plays very important role in the soil conservation they plays role in the restoration program they ro plays role in the conservation of wildlife they plays very important role in the phytoremediation they reduce the chemical compounds they absorb it like chromium mercury all these things so at an industrial level they are very important grasses maintain the climate they provide us a sugar they are used in the medicines next please then you know that uh, we are using a grasses for religious purposes like a, a cynodontactylon the rope which is prepared from one of the grass species that is penicillium it is used in the dasara season uh, to uh, uh, put the leaves of uh, mango on that rope and it will be tied in front of the door so these are the religious grasses they have uh, some significant values with us next please <laughs> grasses plays very important role for aromatic oils so variety of aromatic oils or essential oils are extracted from the grasses for conservation for biomass production it is for shelter purpose for thatching purpose huts are prepared in the sahyadri region many people they use a variety of grasses like sidanthes trianthemeda grasses for thatching purposes paper industries depend on the bamboo grass alcohol is extracted from the sugar cane uh, and then uh, variety of microbes are there uh, in the soil for biomass production there are ornamental plants which are cultivated for lawn preparation for landscaping purposes and grasses and civilization next please so these are the different grass species which are cultivated for landscaping purpose next now why the management of a grassland is essential actually the grasslands and deserts are among the most neglected and yet very important ecosystems uh, where the different species population communities they come together and forming a very complex ecosystem which is supporting a very rich biodiversity in the maharashtra and in india and uh, as far as the india and maharashtra is concerned only 1% of grassland is comes under a protected area net network so we have to more uh, concentrate on the management of grassland we have to increase the grassland instead of cultivation of a trees we have to go for cultivation and management of a grassland don't go for the growing the trees on the uh, hills instead you have to go for protection of a grasslands so the most neglected and abused ecosystem is the grasslands in the country and it is a very serious issue as far as the wildlife is concerned and in that case the madhya pradesh uh, for a department they are uh, taking a care for cultivation and management of a grassland so that is a very good example some of the most threatened and rare species of wildlife make the grassland their homes and they include the indian uh, bustard lesser florican one horn rhinoceros wild buffalo swamp deers and so on this semi arid deccan patches they are converted to the agricultural landscape industrial construction it is there overgrazing it is there because of the fire also there is a uh, problem in the uh, destruction of a wildlife and for the food purpose too the wildlife like a black bucks chinkaras wolves and the indian fox jackals they have been uh, affected by major uh, uh, due to the destruction of a grassland even the majority of birds like larks and the gray partridge uh, all these things are affected due to the disappearance of the grasslands next so the variety of insects bees beetles reptiles pollinator crops are found on the abundance in the grasslands uh, to maintain the food chain ecosystem it is very important it plays prime role increasing the irrigation facility and population it forced to convert these grasslands into the agricultural land but it should be avoided tourism should be uh, in a proper manner poaching and the encroachment by farmland people they also affected the biodiversity of the uh, especially the grasslands cultivation of trees in the grasslands they affect the grass health and biomass production grassland areas are considered as a wasteland and uh, so it was burnt during the month of december or january which losses the biodiversity and it, so it should be prevented there should not be burning happen there it plays very significant role in the soil conservation and it maintains the ecosystem health next please so there are some example that uh, what happen with these grasses and uh, how the, our uh, animals and the birds they get endangered 
So the grassland development at Vinsurni, Fulton area from Satara district was once known as the grass bowl of Maharashtra, but due to the uncontrolled grazing by the animals and the trampling by livestock, there is deterioration in the grassland. Even the Mayuresha wildlife sanctuary and the Baramati uh, in the Supe uh, village, uh, it is a special for gazelle vanity and this depends on the grasslands. The Karnala bird sanctuary in Mumbai, grassland patches with many birds and butterflies, animals like a four horn, antelope, Indian hare, Indian fox, wild boar, jungle cat, and common langur, leopard, and common mongoose, and they are occur in the sanctuary. Uh, the grasslands at Lamkani, it is one of the very good example where uh, by the efforts of uh, Sanjay, uh, Dr. Sanjay sir, over there, he took efforts and because of that, they have in, uh, they are, uh, uh, they have succeeded in increasing the groundwater level and nowadays instead of a desertified conditions of the village, they have improved the economy just because of the maintenance of the grasslands and uh, the water level, uh, it is increased and now people, they were taking a uh, cash crops like a uh, this uh, um, custard apples and then banana and all other agriculture crops. It's just because this is a very good example of uh, maintenance of a grassland at Lamkani and learning forest at Dure. Next, please. So this is uh, one of the um, animal like a uh, black buck sanctuary uh, in the black buck sanctuary at Karzat, uh, Antelope Cervicera, uh, which depends on hardly a 240 hectares of area. Actually, this area is not sufficient for the survival of these species. And so one should maintain the grasslands. Next, please. Great Indian Bustard uh, Sanctuary, Bird Sanctuary at Maldok, and you know that how the species get endangered in the Nanas, and there is much more encroachment, and the forest department and the government is not taking care for the uh, this maintenance of grasslands, and many other activities are going over there, and this bird, it becomes endangered nowadays. Next, please. Uh, this is one of the picture from uh, Murshi area, where they have uh, destroyed uh, the trees and the grasslands, they get exposed. And uh, this is for the purpose of agriculture. And uh, uh, one should conserve all these things and one should must have watch on these uh, grasslands for protection. Next, please. So preservation of all these grasslands, it is very significant, uh, very important. So how to save this grassland? So grassland should not be burned. It should not be considered as a wasteland. In initiatives from the forest department to conserve this grassland, it is highly essential prevention or prohibition of the industrial areas near the sensitive zones uh, should be uh, considered. The state and national policies should not remain on the paper and it should come in action. And so there should be, uh, there is a need to take an effort from, uh, from the uh, societal level. At um, So every everyone should be aware about the significance of the grasslands and they should take a, a proper uh, action over this. Uh, then grazing of livestock should be prevented in protected grassland areas. Instead, allow local people to cut the grasses or allow control grazing. Uh, like Sarai Bandi uh, type of principle should be followed. There should be proper protection to grasslands to maintain the ecosystem. Uh, it should be mandatory to maintain at least uh, some land as a grassland. So earlier uh, there was a uh, lands uh, in every village for these pastures. So that should be maintained properly. Uh, nowadays, this is on the paper only and not in action. So uh, it should be come in force and uh, it should be mandatory to maintain at least a, some uh, land as a grassland with the involvement of a local people at the local level. Educate the society ab about the grassland as a gold land rather than a wasteland. And um, um, by workshop or campaign, one should educate the people, the young uh, youth about the grassland protection how it, uh, these are important for us. Next, please. Thank you so much for listening to me. I took it a little bit fast because of maximum slides, but hope you understood the value and significance of the uh, grasslands. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, it was uh, a long uh, PPT presentation, but it was not absolutely boring or, you know, we enjoyed it a lot. And I guess uh, let's open the platform for question answers so we'll understand even more. Uh, so you can 
uh, ask questions are uh, there are few questions already uh, asked uh, we can take one by one so okay. tanvi can you take it ahead uh, yes ma'am so the first question is from mr nishant venugopal his question is if i need to understand the grass which part of the grass i need to photograph and is there any citizen science effort to catalog the variety of grass okay uh, so um, much work is now uh, done on in maharashtra uh, before that uh, the grass identification it is generally based on the spikelet structure or the floret structure so you have to take a picture of a flower it is known as a floret so spikelet structure that is spikelets are having many florets or few florets and the morphology of floret that is lower gloom i have showed one picture of a floret dissected floret so lower floret it gives us idea so uh, just by understanding the ornamentation pattern of a lower uh, uh, gloom one can identify near about 60 species of grasses so just take a good pictures of a lower gloom and also the inflorescence pattern so that helps us for identification purpose and uh, for that there are some books like a um, there is one book by girish poddar grasses of maharashtra and uh, one book by uh, dr yasar yado and uh, his team uh, that is identify the grasses through lens so they uh, they have a pictorial book through which you can identify the uh, grasses hope it will help and if uh, you need uh, any uh, anything more you just contact me later on thank you ma'am for answering the questions and the platform hello ma'am yes. yes can you send this ppt yes it is already shared you can take from the ma'am okay ma'am uh, so uh, are there any question in the chat box tanvi oh uh, no not any more so uh so people uh, who are here uh, you can open your uh, mics videos and you can ask questions directly you can raise your hands uh, or you even you can ask directly oh uh, yes we have two people Uh, let's start with dibyandu sarkar uh, good morning ma'am this is dibyandu sarkar uh, i would like to ask one thing as you said uh, truly that uh, don't call it wasteland call it grassland so yes. that is a very new thing which i learned and uh, from today onwards i will just uh, um, adopt this I mean, let's change my mentality. Okay. Of, uh, it's a gold so, land, actually. It's a yes, gold yes. land. Yes, but ma'am, what I personally feel is nothing that uh, comes with profits uh, can be saved easily. So these grand grasslands and uh, the uh, endangered species are encroached and killed due to uh, other profits. If is there any way so that we can make these grasslands profitable? like planting some trees any kind of species or any any other mode that can help this we can save more because sometimes the mentality has changed from grassland to wasteland so how can we do that actually the uh, we have to educate the people and uh, especially one has to uh, contact the forest department because forest department only taking uh, cultivation programs so the thing is that they have to take much efforts for grassland management this is the first uh, thing second thing yes. those uh, uh, people or those farmers they have a land agricultural land but uh, they are treating it as a wasteland suppose so uh, on that land one can grow the grasses and that can be harvested and sold as a fodder चारा घोटाळा ऐकला असेल हा एवढा मोठा चारा घोटाळा फक्त फॉर्डर साठी झाला सो दॅट जस्ट दिस वन एक्झाम्पल कॅन क्लिअर द व्हॅल्यू ऑफ ग्रासेस येस मॅम एक्झॅक्टली आय वॉज ट्राईंग टू नो वेदर वी कॅन युज मीन्स 
grasses like bamboo and uh, lemon grass they they are used for uh, means sold at higher cost industry. yes yeah. yes and you said like aroma oils can be made they are very yeah. high value product so if yes. we can uh, use many grasses uh, cross uh, cultivation like of thing that can help yes. i think there are so many people from uh, raipur area madhya pradesh they are uh, they are cultivating the simbopogon grasses for uh, extraction of essential oil and they were uh, they sold them uh, to the uh, different industries for cos especially cosmetic industries okay thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you so much thank you ma'am um, one more thing uh, how yeah. can i help uh, help your cause we all can help your cause uh, saving these uh, grasslands uh very important thing those people who are taking a cultivation program uh, treating the hills as a wasteland tell them that these are the grasses these are there and the you know that the very important bird peacock during the summer season this peacock eat the grains of these grasses and suppose if they will cultivate the trees and it will become a forest at that time the grasses will not grow in abundance so uh, tell them that instead of uh, growing the trees try to manage the grasses cultivate the grasses okay. grasses can be cultivated during summer season you have to sow the seeds so uh, what happens during the rainy season it will germinate and once the biomass get formed uh, they uh, you know next year it will germinate this there is one uh, uh, grassland development program uh, which was run by or carried out by uh, ketki ghate and mansi karandikar and they have given very good example that how the grasslands can be managed and developed um is there any uh, kind of pamphlets or any educational material that you can share with us and we all can share on our social media platform so that that can spread uh, very rapidly and educate more and more people okay. even those yes. who are okay. not on this platform yes definitely i will share yes yes i think that will help a little bit to your yes. cause Yes. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, next we have Shubhi Agarwal. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, as we were talking, as you were talking about carbon sequestration, so I just want to know that uh, the uh, sorry, in grassy patches of our campus, how could it be used for carbon uh, sequestration process? Uh, you can grow some C uh, four grasses. so you have to find out on the internet which are the different c4 grasses or if uh, you may contact me later on i will Only provide the you a list of grasses will work ma'am uh, that will work more c3 okay. grasses also do but uh, c4 grasses will work more so i will suggest the names of that species they may be grow uh, there in your campus so one thing is that you have to uh, know this you have to identify this and then try multiplication of all these grasses it will help Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Kanishk. Kanishk, are you there? Otherwise, Mayuri, you can go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I am there. Actually, I had a bad connection, so I could not hear. Am I audible now? Yes. yes 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 good afternoon ma'am ma'am my question was regarding um, there are these grasslands which are present in gujarat's kutch region and they are the species which is called uh, it is um, known as bavard and many people say that they are sucking excess water and they are very invasive and they are very destructive so should those grasslands be uh, considered as wrong or uh, what Uh, what is your opinion on those kinds of grasslands which people are thinking are they are taking away the uh, uh, local fauna and everything uh, what is your opinion on that actually that grassland is very important because uh, they are found along the uh, sea shores and they uptake the uh, soil uh, sorry uh, salt particles so these are uh, and also besides that so many birds are visiting to that area so it's a food for these uh, uh, birds so actually it's not a invasive uh, type of grass but it's actually useful local people they feel that uh, this is invasive one 
it is not like that okay ma'am there was I have actually not visited that area actually i have uh, not seen that yeah okay actually i had visited so visited there were bunny grassland huh uh am i audible yeah yeah uh ma'am i had visited that area and uh, many people were telling ki um during indira gandhi's rule uh, for uh, creating uh, a fast green development in kutch region to uh, make it green in very uh, less num- amount of time um through aeroplanes and helicopters they threw the seeds of uh, bavard and then they have grown and now they are are uh, taking away the invasive for uh, like the forests which were originally growing there so they are like complaining about these forests actually i am not aware about that particular species i will go through it and then uh, i will see what is exactly okay. that grass species and what's happening over there okay ma'am thank you yeah. thank you uh mayuri you can go ahead with the question yes oh, hello ma'am i want to hello. ask Uh, hello am i audible yeah yeah you are audible yes uh, ma'am uh, uh, now uh, before some time you have mentioned that we need to do the cultivation of grasses on the hills but my question is when i used to visit the tarzai tikri near my place uh, okay. there many times i observe uh, there is a seasonal change like in the rainy season there are a lot of uh, 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 huge grasses are there but afterwards during the winter winter time i can observe that the grasses uh, the Oh, the variety of grasses vanished. I don't know how it how it happened naturally, or it means the grasses are seasonal, or they are. Uh, Actually, the grasses are seasonal. Okay. During rainy season, they grow, and uh, once they complete their life cycle in three to four months, they get vanished. So they get transformed into the biomass. So they okay. dries up. Biomass is formed from that. So life span is short. its life span is hardly 3 to 4 months only few grasses they are having a perennial uh, type of uh, uh, thing means uh, long lived grasses are there like tripogon and the uh, hygrorhiza these are a long lived grasses but uh, aristida and other kinds of species they are short lived okay lopopogon yeah okay ma'am then uh, link to this i want to ask one more question so as a designer when we when we want to introduce the glass grasses in the public spaces uh, maybe a garden or maybe a hill side so we need to uh, maintain it so uh, we need to re cultivate it uh, after some period of time yes. is yes. that okay yes 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 yeah okay ma'am thank you thank you we have one more question from mr satvashil jagdare this question is does forest department have any policy or regulations to cultivate or save the grassland especially in class caste like areas uh actually uh, i don't have clear idea but uh, on caste plateau there is a very rich diversity so such a things cannot be done uh, as a only grass um, uh, sowing is uh, carried out over there it is not like that but uh, those areas which are open there means outside areas okay. there the forest department can go for cultivation or management but on the class class plateau it is not possible and the forest department will also not do uh, such a things thank you thank you ma'am uh, we have another question from mr nishant uh, his question is there are reports of some practice by indigenous communities of burning grasses to promote fresh growth any idea about this does this help the grasses and biodiversity actually it is a wrong thing happening uh, 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 the people feel that uh, the, if one can burn the grasses uh, it will grow properly but uh, actually they are um means uh, burning these grasses for one purpose because agricultural lands are situated to the forest land and if they will uh, burn that land the seeds will not come in the agriculture field and there will be uh, no further problem of a uh, weeding but if one can burn the grasses or the grasslands definitely most of the f- uh, flora and fauna uh, it gets harm especially the microflora since microbiodiversity is there so many fungal species so many bacteria are there they are performing 
in the soil it is not seen through the eyes they are so microscopic so all these becomes dead because of that so most of the important microflora get vanish by burning this grassland so it should not be burned uh, thank you ma'am uh, we have another question from lalita tilming uh, ma'am you can go ahead uh, good morning everyone and uh, thank you ma'am for the very good uh, presentation i am personally being very benefited uh, out of this and uh, uh, I have one question, and that is with the bamboo identification. Okay. Uh, can you help me in uh, some characteristics uh, which uh, we should look for in bamboo identification, or how can I identify bamboo species, particularly from Pune itself? Uh, in case of bamboos, instead of a inflorescence or instead of a stem structure, the scales which are present at the nodal region. So the scale morphology or the, what do we say? Mm. Uh, there is a um, one structure, a leafy structure, a papery structure or sometimes membrane structure which is present at the nodal region of bamboos. So that actually used for identification. There is a, there are books for uh, bamboo species identification. Later on, you can contact me. I will tell you the name of that uh, book through which you can identify the bamboo species. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so, I have an inclined interest towards orchids. So, I'd like to understand whether species of orchids like maybe habanaria or let's say uh, terrestrial ones or which are generally found in midst of grasses. So these species, do they get affected by the type or the species of grasses around them? And how do the grasses play an important role around these? Uh, not much for the epiphytic uh, orchids, but as far as the terrestrial orchids is concerned or the uh, saprophytic orchids is concerned, especially terrestrial, means habinaria uh, longicorniculata or right. the habinaria uh, other species. So, so many species are there. So many. Yes. So that gets definitely affected by the grasses. Because if the grass flora is not associated with these species, it will not grow. Okay. There is an interaction between the microflora, which is associated with the rhizosphere of the grasses and the rhizosphere of the uh, this orchid. Okay. So if the grasses will get destroyed, the orchid species definitely get affected. Their ratio will get reduced. Their percentage of the population get reduced. So maintenance of the grass flora for protection of so many red species, so many orchid species, variety of species, it is very important. Right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So, uh, I guess, uh, you know, many of uh, these questions, uh, they were in my mind also. So uh, it was a really good question answer sessions. If there are any questions, uh, yes, there I can see one hand. Uh, but before that, just let me ask one question, which I have just popped in my head. So Rani ma'am, uh, nowadays different campuses are coming along or societies and uh, they keep on maintaining lawns. So can you um, guide us up, uh, about, uh, because nowadays they say that you, by maintaining a lawn, you are wasting a lot of water also. We, instead, you can use some other thing in, instead of lawns so if people are maintaining lawns uh, is there any tip, specific grass species which we can use in that or we should not have a lawn in landscape in majority of cases what you should think actually um, if you have a very small space so you can go ahead with the lawns no problem because in a small space you want to make a greenery but you have a, if you have a large uh, space, a landscape over there, at that time you can distribute it. A small patch, it will be for the lawn. And other, on other area, you may go for cultivation of one of the species from Centella, uh, Munduk Purniti said. Uh, it forms a carpet. So you have to go for a carpet forming uh, another species, not only the grasses, but another uh, uh, dicotyledonous plant. We have Dvidal Vanaspati Manto. That category is not the Carpet forming uh, species are also there. So you have to go for cultivation of that. And 
it's true that there is a wastage of water for the lawns it's true so instead of that you may go for another species but if small space it is there you may go for lawn also okay thanks we have one question from pujitha hello ma'am yes yes ma'am i have been uh, exploring about foraging edible weeds around us and um as we have talked about farmers burning the grass mm -hmm. is is that would be helpful if um we would provide uh, the knowledge for them to like uh, learning about foraging edible weeds because even um, uh, it is not only useful for fodder even humans can eat for nutritional purposes so how could we um, do that um mm -hmm. actually pujita what the people are doing or the farmers are doing they are firstly cutting that grasses for fodder purpose and after that they are burning so uh, as far as the importance is concerned they know that the value for fodder purpose so more than that we have to tell them that don't burn it yes ma'am okay and what about uh, the for human consumption ma'am there are many who has started foraging the edible weeds around uh, the public places is there any uh, is that useful for the biodiversity as far as the indian indigenous flora is concerned it's not harmful uh, or hazardous but uh, if it's a exotic thing then one has to look for that okay ma'am thank you thank you so much for the thank you thank you we are open for one last question now uh okay i think everybody has asked questions um i request everybody to turn on their videos so we can have a quick picture and and let's thank rani ma'am with the open videos <laughs> thanks everyone yes thank you so much uh so i'd like to thank uh, rani ma'am on behalf of symbiosis biodiversity cell and all the participants present here and uh, we'd like to thank you ma'am for taking out the time to impart and empower us with knowledge i'm sure all of us present here have learned a new thing about uh, grasses especially and especially things like i mean when you think of grasses one generally doesn't think about the granularity of these delicate species and it's amusing to know the wonders of grasses and how important of an habitat it is for various species around us aspects like a uh, difference in type of grasses which depends on the habitat and looking at it as a collective species we still fail to understand its diversity and importance and now i'm sure we all will certainly be looking at grasses with a new found interest and do our part to understand and hence uh, do our part to save grasslands so thanks a lot ma'am uh, for today and thank you all for taking time out on a sunday hope you all have a good day ahead and take care stay safe and have a great day ahead thanks tanvi thank you ma'am thank you so rani ma'am also end with this note that we uh, invite you on our campus after this session like almost every alternate slide i was thinking that i should get you on the campus walk with you and show you around different grasses and ask you many questions because this session is utterly incomplete without walking with you on the uh, field in the field so i invite you and some of our students definitely will join so thanks and hope to see you on the campus ma'am yes thank you actually it's a topic to learn on the ground and not uh, online <laughs> but still uh, it was a fantastic uh, presentation you. and uh, we like <laughs> you did everybody your... understood it <laughs> no no we really uh, means understand many of the things uh, some botanical uh, things which definitely uh, when we go, we'll go on the field then we'll understand even better but we really had a better understanding of uh, grass species and its significance yes ma'am thank you
so okay uh, see you uh, next sunday on another uh, fantastic session so next sunday speaker is also with us today i am not going to divulge his name but yes see you next sunday uh, for another session thanks thank you everyone bye thank you bye bye ma'am thank you so my team tanvi and kunanal tejal thanks thank you very much i'm going to talk with you uh, we haven't yet finished so <laughs> uh, let's see you on our group now hmm? yes thank you thank you ma'am thank you everyone yeah bye thank you ma'am thank you everyone thank you ma'am thank ma thanks a lot